We truly serve a great and glorious God. And while we may not always understand his ways or sense his goodness, he will always lead us in his perfect way. And he will always do that which is right. Now yesterday I announced the postponement of all services here at Bedford Bible Church until April the 5th. I shared the reasons why the leadership here had taken that decision and how we planned on continuing to serve during these uncertain days. My goal is to post a series of short regular videos along with a blog post to help keep our eyes on Christ and to always keep before us that here at Bedford Bible Church we are part of a gospel community. Uh, while we cannot gather together I do not want us to forget one another and we have a privilege to take part in our communities to serve them with the power that God has given to us and to use our resources to help those who are in need. So I want to think this morning about a few things that we can learn from uh, Paul's writing to the church at Galatia. And really what I have in mind is what can I do to serve my neighbor? And I'm going to have a few suggestions of what we can do, but I'm relying on you to share with us what we can do to help you and to help your neighbors. When Paul wrote his letters to the churches across the known world, he frequently repeated uh, several themes. One theme focused on a cause, and then there were many themes that reflected the effect. Now, the effect was this, that he and other Christians lived, loved, and led as Christ did. Jesus Christ serves as our example in all things. So what about living? How do we live as Christ lived? Well, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul wrote this, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. As a Christian, I don't want to live according to my will, according to my own wisdom, to set my own goals or aspirations. But instead, I want to let Christ live through me. And so the wisdom that I want to live with is Christ's. The will that I want to follow is his. My goals and desires, I want to be those things that God wants to see accomplished in this world. What then about loving as Christ loved? Well, in Galatians 5 verse 14, it says this, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus Christ himself said that he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And there are many truths that revolve around that, many applications. But as we consider it here, I want us to see that we can love as Christ loved. There are some who, in their efforts to emphasize grace rather than the law, miss out that the motivation of the law is love. Now, if I try to keep the law to please God, I will always fail. I'll be miserable. I'll be bitter. I'll become a hypocrite. If I try to get others to keep the law, whether it's God's law or my own preferences that I set up as law, then I'll make them miserable. I'll become bitter. They'll be bitter. We'll all be hypocrites. But if we use the law as a guideline in serving God and others, then I will be showing them the love of Christ. If I obey God's instructions, then I'm going to demonstrate generosity, fairness, consistency, friendship, and so much besides. We understand that the law can be abused, but the law can also be a good thing. I think about the reality today of so many shelves in grocery stores being empty as many people, either because they're panicking or they see someone else panic, and so they gather more because they don't want to be the ones left with nothing. But if we think about the law of God that teaches us to be fair, to be generous, uh, if we think about God's command to the people of Israel as the manna was provided for them in the wilderness, they were told to gather only so much as they needed. And so there are so many things about the law that if I were to obey it with the right motivation and with the right goal, it would do good to those that are around me. What about leading as Christ led? Well, in Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, the Apostle Paul wrote this, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Followers of Christ should be leaders in doing good works. And we shouldn't grow weary in, in seeking opportunities to serve and being willing to help those in need. We can show wisdom in resting when we need to rest. 
But the goal even then is not our own personal comfort, but rather it's preparing to work for God and others further. We can find strength spiritually as God renews us through his word, and that will empower us physically to do more than we could have ever done before. As we go through this time of uncertainty with this virus, I want to encourage you to check on your neighbors, search out needs in your church and community, make a list of people to phone, uh, to prepare a meal for, whatever it may be that you can find to do. You know, can we help as a, as a church here? Do you know of a need that we as a body of Christians can assist with? Do we need to collect groceries for an elderly neighbor who is concerned about going out? Can we pick up medicine for someone who is sick? Maybe we can send a note of encouragement to the lonely and the discouraged. Maybe we can provide a meal and groceries for someone who, because of this whole situation, has lost their job. I'm sure there's a long list of ways in which we can serve our community that I can't think of, but you can. And so I'd encourage you, please share those needs with me, either directly or in the comments. Now, I said that Paul talked about a cause and an effect, and we've looked at the effect. Paul's service to others and the service that we want to offer to others is an effect, but what is the cause? Well, the cause is our salvation through Jesus Christ. We live, love, and lead the way we do because of our salvation in Him. In Galatians 2 verse 16, Paul wrote this, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. For the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By the works of the law, no one is going to be saved. Paul did not do good works in order to try and please God. He knew that in his own strength, he would always fail. Paul, perhaps more than anyone, tried to do works in order to be sinless. But he failed every time, and he knew it. He came, though, to understand the beautiful truth of the substitutionary death of Christ. I grew up in a country where soccer, the football, as we call it, is number one. And in soccer, as with many sports, you can substitute one player for another. And you know, when Jesus Christ hung on the cross, he willingly became our substitute. All my sin, all my guilt, and the punishment I deserved was placed on him. And now, when I admit to God that I'm a sinner and I ask him to forgive me because of what Jesus has done, then God has promised to forgive me. And he'll do the same for any who calls upon him. At that moment that I place my faith in Jesus Christ, another exchange takes place. Just as my sin was put on Jesus, when I become a believer, then the righteousness of Christ is placed upon me. It's put into my account. And so when God looks at me, he sees the righteousness of his son. Now I do not do good works to try and please God. I do all I can to serve God and others because I know God is already pleased with me. If you share that cause with me, if that cause has made an impact in your life of being a Christian, then let the effect of being a Christian shine through your life like never before. I understand that people are afraid, but as Christians, we can give our fear to God, and then our cup of peace and joy can overflow and it can lift up others. If you have never received Christ as your Savior, then why delay? Please contact me, and I would love to tell you what God's Word says about knowing your sins are forgiven, how to become a child of God, and knowing that one day heaven will be your home. Now, as I said before, I want to post these short videos on a regular basis because I want to be able to encourage you, and I want to encourage you in ways that you can help others. If you have any questions uh, that you think I can uh, help you with, then please do not hesitate to contact me. As I said, my goal at the moment is to serve you and to serve others. And so please do let me know how we can do that. May God bless you, and I will be praying for you.